With the temple's signature look of overgrown tropical trees, dominating tens of meters above the ancient stone roofs, which have been withstanding hundreds or even thousands of kilograms of weight for so many centuries. Taprom is among the most visited and well-known temples in the Angkor Archaeological Park of Simri Province, which is about 330 kilometers away from the capital city of Phnom Penh. The man-made architectural design is already impressive, yet still quite common in the land of temples. What is beyond normalcy is the architectural design, which has been integrated by Mother Nature. From within and outside of the borders, tourists visit and revisit Taprum. Inside the premises, Chpong Tree dominates the look wanting it but not wanting it at the same time. These trees, although they do offer a beautiful impression for this sacred area, also tear down the temple stone apart. Their roots grow larger and their weight increases over the years. For this tricky situation, the specialists working on the site have to decided to keep some of the trees alive and healthy as a way to retain the beautiful scenery, yet they also have to eliminate some others which were deemed unsafe for the temple. Within the archaeological park, which was officially protected by UNESCO in 1992, Taprom is located along the smaller tourism circuit. The name Taprum or Brahma was perhaps derived from the sculptures of Lokeswara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, which can be witnessed along the gates. Since these sculptures were incorporated with four faces, should they be somehow connected to the face of Brahma or Taprum in the Khmer language? Nevertheless, Based on findings made through the ancient inscription, the name Rijvihir is thought to be the former name of this temple. When mentioning about the Rijvihir, specialists who worked on history often remembered the old era of King Jayvarman VII. After obtaining victory over a battle with the dam in 1181 AD, he was presiding over the construction of many Mahayana Buddhism temples as a dedication for those who had sacrificed their souls in the combat. Taprum Temple was also a place where King Jayvarman VII created as a way to bring good religious deeds to his mother. For this reason, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom, a resemblance to the king's mother, is enclosed within the central tower. Dating back to that era, the practice of Mahayana Buddhism was often conducted through the respect given toward the Buddha and Lokeshwara. Researchers also exposed that Taprum functioned both as a religious center as well as an educational center, which means inside the 60 hectare land, Taprum was also considered to be one of the largest universities during that time. Based on the design language with four towers presiding around the central tower, some subordinated buildings, galleries, and libraries crisscrossing the compound through the interpretation of Mahayana Buddhism represent the shrinking of the cosmos. Some extruding Theravada Buddhism sculptures, illustrating the legend of the tenth great birth stories of the Buddha, was sculpted with depictions of angels and traditional flowers designed along the walls and the gables. In the eras following King Jayvarman VII, the changing of religion occurred during the 13th century. In this sense, the majority of the sculptures were altered from Buddhism design to Hinduism. The alteration can be seen through the changing of Buddha sculptures to the sculpture of Hermit or Shiva Lingam. Sometimes, the Buddha sculptures can be seen entirely erased. 
Along the outer walls, sculptures inside the frames were observed to be chipped away. Speculation suggested that the original form of these sculptures were the picture of Buddha, sitting under a naga with Lokeshwara by his side. With a more dedicated observation, on the lower elevation of some walls, we can see smaller sculptures, which depicted the day-to-day -day livelihood of the people. Focusing on the personal beliefs of the local tourists, these visitors often visit one of the towers of the temple by the name Prasad Kutrung, or the Temple of Chess Beating. Believers tend to lay their back on the wall and beat their chest in a rhythmic manner, as this beating movement generates strong echoes inside the chamber. This action is believed to stir away bad deeds. Once in a while, visitors would often come here to conduct this superstition. For the past few years, under the financial support of the Foreign Ministry of India, the two sites have been working hand in hand with the Indian Institute of Archaeology and the Apsara National Authority for the conservation work. The labor force which serves the conservation work is actually locally sourced, meaning that they are the people who live in the area of Hong Kong.